Chardonnay is having its new heyday. Despite getting a bad rap for many years, it's still the best-selling wine in the United States. Donald Patz is here to give us the ABCs of Chardonnay for all you ABCers out there, which means anything but Chardonnay. I'm a self-proclaimed one or was one for a while. I think when I first started drinking wine, I, I heard Chardonnay was no good, so therefore I didn't think I was supposed to drink it. Talk about sort of the ups and downs that it's had. Well, it's a, it's really interesting because um, there is there is certainly a, a couple of different times in the trajectory of my career of over 30 years where um, on one side, it seems as though Chardonnay maybe wasn't as popular, but if you actually look at the statistics of sales, Chardonnay has gone up almost every year for the last 40 years. It is not any less popular than it ever was. In fact, it's more popular than it ever was. Um, but styles change over time. and. A lot of things in the wine industry are actually sort of fashion-based, and the current fashion for Chardonnay is quite different from what it was when I first got interested in wine. There was a point where you could not have too much oak. It was, it was all about how good your barrels were and how many times you could um, add more barrel character to the wine. I've said to people recently that, you know, Chardonnay, you should be proud of drinking Chardonnay. Chardonnay is super flexible with food. It uh, comes in a wide variety of styles, so if you have a particular preference, if you like those oaky style Chardonnays, don't feel bad. Yeah. That is a, uh, a, a especially legitimate way to, to approach Chardonnay. It's, it's certainly been done for a long time and many people like it. Um, but if you're kind of tired of that, then there's alternatives and a lot of really good alternatives in Chardonnay that are not quite that oaky and over the top. Those really dramatic, very oaky wines uh, are so different, and you just feel so excited because you can taste that difference. But I think over time they become a little tiring. So um, I focused with Maritana on trying to do a little lighter oak character and more focused on the fruity elements of Chardonnay, and particularly the distinctive floral min mineral thing that goes on in Russian River. And talk about the Russian River and how it might be uh, different than, say, a Cornell shot or from somewhere else. Well, as every one of these areas has some unique factors to them. Carneros is really a beautiful area as well and does great for Chardonnay and for Pinot Noir. And then there's, of course, the Far Sonoma Coast, um, very much cooler, very super low yields, and a really distinctive character. For, for me, and when I was getting a chance to start over again, I really thought about this in Sonoma because I love Sonoma as a county, and I love um, what we can do over there with, uh, with these two grape varieties. But I said, you know, my, my favorite part of Sonoma has always been Russian River. So why don't I just draw a line around Russian River and say, that's where I want to get all of my grapes. About a year ago, I left Patson Hall and was... Um, given the opportunity to start afresh. So I chose several different new projects, but this one that we're gonna to taste today and focus on Chardonnay is called Maritana Vineyards, and it's exclusively Russian River Valley, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. The first one is, is my uh, Russian River blend. And um, when I, for years and years, when I worked at other wineries, people, if you had more than one of something, the one that was Russian River would be your regular wine. So. Instead of calling it a regular wine, I've added a little name to it. So it's La Riviere. Oh. So this is, uh, which means river, and the Pinot Noir is La Russe, which is Russian. So basically, I named my Chardonnay River and the Pinot Noir Russian okay. for Russian River. <laughs> there you go. But this is all barrel fermented, but all in used barrels. So it gets a much gentler uh, oak extract that way, very light, delicate kind of oakiness and the the wine it was picked a little less ripe so not quite as alcoholic uh, it's still plenty alcoholic it's 14 percent alcohol but it's uh i just like the balance point that this comes to it's a really delicious forward luscious style without being heavy you're telling me um off camera that these are the 2017s you just that they were just bottled recently and you're this is kind of your first opportunity uh to taste them what do you think so far I want to drink the whole bottle. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to drink all four, but I got to pick up my kids from preschool in an hour. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really uh, it's a really ex exciting experience to start by looking at the grapes in the vineyard and then watching them mature, bring them back to the winery, do the winemaking, and then eventually you see them coming off the bottling line, and it was just a thrilling moment, a, a really refreshing and restart for me. Um, but I, I'm really happy with the Chardonnays that we made. You have three different versions of a Chardonnay, and so sometimes people are thinking, wait a second, same winery, three different <laughs> Chardonnays, the same grape, how the heck can they taste very different? And that's a really great question, and it, we sort of base this model off 
what they have done for millennia in, in Burgundy. I have a blend of multiple vineyards, and then I have two single vineyard designates that we're going to taste. So it's an example of sort of like a choir, and then you have a couple of soloists that want to, that are, uh, you know, particularly gifted. So the, the second Chardonnay up would be the Dutton Ranch, their original planting, planted in 1967. It's a tiny bit of what they now farm, which is over 1,400 acres. Um, it's just this little tiny block, but old, old, 50-year-old Chardonnay vines, which is extraordinary. Um, and I made a very small amount of this as a single vineyard designate, uh, and I refer to it as, they call it shop block. I call it shop block 1967, because okay. I want everybody to remember it's 50-year-old <laughs> Chardonnay vines. Yeah. What I'm really thrilled about is, well, obviously, these 50-some-year-old Chardonnay vines, are. it's an extraordinary opportunity to be able to work with something so unique and rare in California. 50 years ago, very little Chardonnay was planted anywhere and nothing was planted so far to the west. So this was a particularly cool area back then. Um, but it's extraordinary to be able to use it. And what happens with older vines uh, generally is that they tend to produce sometimes less fruit, but also more concentrated and more unusual flavors get built into it. And and I think that's really true here. I, I was kind of amazed at how interesting and different it was from from the other uh, Chardonnay vineyards that I've been getting. The next one is also from Dutton Ranch and it's actually not very far from the shop block but it is a hillside site that looks down onto shop block and this is sort of the the essence of Dutton Ranch. They, th It's called Hanson Hill. I don't think anybody else has put that on their label before but all of the best Chardonnay producers who buy grapes from the Duttons have a little part of Hanson Hill. It's, it's their most expensive grapes. They give it extraordinary extra care. And it's all a particular clone, which is we have not really talked about um, with regard to Chardonnay. I think Chardonnay comes in multiple variations, so slightly genetically different, but still Chardonnay. The, the clone that's being used up on Hanson Hill is called Old Wente, so it's an original selection that came from the Wente vineyards over in Livermore. Um, it goes back to the early 20th century, came through multiple sources, so we don't really know exactly the provenance of where these grapevines were originated, but it's, uh, it's a spectacular site. Yeah, absolutely. And then one of the things that I think is really uh, neat about Chardonnay uh, is it ages really well. Um, Sometimes we don't think about aging white wines, or, well, I guess some people don't think about aging white wines. People in the wine biz do think about aging white wines. Uh, talk about the ageability of Chardonnay and then the one that you brought here specifically. Absolutely. You know, the fun thing about wine is that um, it does change over time. And so when you first release a wine, like these 2017s are going to be coming out very soon, they're young and vibrant and fresh and, and sort of like happy go they're like puppies they're like happy go lucky and they they're delicious and flashy and then over time they take on a, a you know a different kind of character of a more gentle and more complex flavor it's what's going on is very slow oxidation in the bottle typically we think of it as coming through the cork and i think that's probably true not everybody likes the taste of older wines, and that's okay too. You don't have to like the taste of older wines. I know people that started a wine cellar because they'd heard that aged wines were so much better, and then they had them for eight or ten years and didn't like them. <laughs> so if you're thinking about doing that, I really recommend you find a place to buy some older wines first and see if you actually like the taste of properly cellared uh, wines, white or red. Properly cellared, I think, is the key, the key because thing. if they're yeah, if they're not aged properly, then you're going to get a representation of the wine that is is not how it should have aged. That's right. It aged. It's it's critical. The storage is essential. It has to be probably even cooler than you think. A lot of people say, oh, 55, but if I was going to put together a cellar that I wanted to keep long term, I would go even cooler than that. Probably in the high 40s. Um, it slows down the aging process and gives the, the wine time to really show everything that it's got. So what I brought was a wine that I was part of the process in producing back in 2008. It's also Russian River. I wanted to keep with the theme. theme and it's, uh, it's a vineyard site that's owned by the Martinelli family called Zio Tony Ranch. And it's a, it's a beautiful spot. This is 100% one of the Dijon clones. So it's a it's a selection that was originally made in France and then brought to the United States, uh, Dijon Clone 76. Barrel fermented, a higher percentage of new barrels than I would 
probably use on it today, but it was really the fashion in 2008. And uh, I think it's aged very interestingly. It's as, I've had some that are very fresh and lively, and I've had some that have been really wobbly and kind of oxidized and tired. This one is struck a middle pose, so it's, it's definitely not young and vibrant, but it's, it's not over the hill. It's got great complexity, and there's that sort of marzipan character. Uh, toasted notes in it. It's just delicious. A really common question I get from people is, what what should I buy my friend? What kind of wine should I buy them? It, like a, It's like, I don't know your friend and what they like, <laughs> but um, drink what yeah. you like. There's no right yeah. or wrong, right? Um, it, it, there's just personal preference. That's really true. I often um, don't even worry about whether we're having fish or steak or whatever the wine sounds like having fun that night. That's what I'm going to drink with it. It's is there is no right or wrong there are things that probably harmonize better but if you feel like drinking a really big napa valley cabernet with uh your fish tacos then you should do that absolutely and if you like chardonnay you shouldn't feel bad about it you should drink a lot of it actually yeah and, and we i have been as of late especially with this beautiful weather i mentioned it's mid-august i know um mom and gloria Frere started harvesting uh, picking grapes a couple days ago where are we at in the in the harvest for you so sparkling wine pe yeah. pretty producers are picking grapes um their very very first grapes are coming in and they'll probably be harvesting on and off for the next month I'm guessing that my first grapes will probably come in in the next two or three weeks. It just depends on how the next month or so plays out. We're all at the mercy of Mother Nature, for sure. The, the grapes, the wine, and, and us. <laughs> yeah, well, that's really true. But it's one of the reasons we love wine so much. It's not a manufactured product. It is, it is at the mercy of what happens during that year. And it, it should be a reflection of that. So wines should be different every year. And we... I appreciate it. I expect it, and I want it to be different every vintage. Yeah, absolutely. I'll drink to that. Donald, do you have a cheers or a toast? Anything that you say around your house? <laughs> well, <laughs> it can be dirty. No, it's not going to be dirty. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you this: the secret one. You want to be initiated Always. into my secret one? Of course, I do. Okay, so I, I do this only with real friends. So now everybody's going to know it. But. It, it's, uh, it came because my son is, was interested in video games, and we played this one particular video game over and over, and it was driving us nuts. And it was called Return to Zork, if you ever look at it. And there's a place there where you get, everybody gets stuck. We were there hours trying to figure out how to get through this one little part of the game. And there's a gentleman in this who's uh, really interesting, who keeps talking to you the whole time and saying all kinds of stuff. So I've taken two of the things that he said and made them into a toast, which is... The first part, it's a call and response toast. So you can go along with okay, me. Okay, well, play at home, play at home, people. Get your Chardonnay. Yeah, put us on pause and then get your glass and then you can do this with okay. me. So, what, what I, what anybody who wants to start this toast says is, who deserves this more than us? And then the, the response is, damn few and they're all dead. Okay. So, so I'm going to start, go. who deserves this more than us? Damn, damn few and they're all dead. dead.